Hello everyone. Welcome to BSc second semester. I am Dr. Pratima Mathias. I shall be teaching you uh, the unit which contains organic chemistry. Okay. So this unit is as in the previous semester very easy. Okay. We shall begin with the first chapter that is alkenes. In this session, that is session 1 of the chapter alkenes, we shall be dealing with nomenclature and methods of preparation. For you, you have three methods of preparation. So now let us look into nomenclature of alkenes. In order to know about the nomenclature of alkenes, kindly pardon all the background music here. I cannot make it soundless. Uh, okay, it is a busy street here. Hence, you will have some sound. Kindly pardon me. Okay, let me move on with the nomenclature. We have seen in the previous semester regarding nomenclature of alkanes. Kindly recall that. What did you do in alkanes? You selected the longest carbon chain as the parent carbon atom right in alkanes and then what did you do you started numbering that alkane chain you had to bear in mind regarding the substituents which are present on the alkane chain you were supposed to see that the substituents got the least number okay so you started numbering from that end which gave least number to the substituents after that, you started naming it, depending the parent carbon atom. If it was uh, three chained, then three carbon in that particular chain, it became, yes, propane. If it was four, it became butane. Five, it became pentane, right? And the substituents, you had to arrange them alphabetically with the number where it is attached suffix to it. I hope you recalled all those things with respect to alkenes. We have similar things with respect to alkene nomenclature. There we had A N E as suffix. In alkenes we have E N E. It is an in which means alkenes will have minimum of one double bonds. Okay. So, the suffix to alkenes is ENE, -E, which indicates an alkene or cycloalkene. It may be cyclic or it may be acyclic. The next point which you have to bear in mind is the longest chain chosen for the root name must include both carbon atoms of the double bond. You cannot leave the carbon carbon double bond and you can, cannot choose the longest chain. The longest chain in case of alkene should include carbon-carbon double bond containing carbon atoms. Next point, the root chain must be numbered. So, you have chosen the longest root chain in that you are going to number it. Must be numbered from the end nearest a double bond carbon atom. If the double bond is in the center of the chain, the nearest substituent rule is used to determine the end where numbering starts. Okay, If the double bond is somewhere in the center, you have to see that the substituent gets the less number. The smaller of the two numbers designated, designating the carbon atoms of the double bond is used as the double bond locator. Okay. The smallest one should be taken. We have seen this. If more than one double bond is present, the compound is named as diene, triene or equivalent prefix indicating the number of double bonds. And each double bond is assigned a locator. So this we shall see in the next part of this particular chapter that is dienes. Okay? Chapter 1 contains alkenes as well as dienes. We shall see that a little bit later. So from this slide you have to remember alkene 
the suffix of the alkene will be ene okay and then you have to choose the chain such that the carbon carbon double bond will also be in that particular chain parent chain then you are supposed to number the chain such that the first carbon atom of the double bond gets the least number if the carbon carbon double bond is in between somewhere then you have to number it in such a way that the substituent gets the least number okay and then you know the other things you have to if there are more than one substituents you have to arrange them alphabetically if you have similar substituents then you have to prefix them with di tri or tetra all such things okay all the other things are going to remain the same so while naming alkenes we have two methods one is common method of nomenclature and the other one is iupac method of nomenclature so in the previous slide we have seen what are the rules to be followed while you name them with iupac okay common names are usually uh, so this is ethene ethane so it is ethylene oh, y l e n e was given when it was propane derivative it was given as propylene so if you had a butane derivative it would become butylene like that but using common names we cannot name uh, branched compounds hence we will need iupac nomenclature so we shall see this so it is a two carbon containing uh, molecule so two means meth meth n en en is replaced by in so it is ethene i'm sorry this is ethane so ethane en is replaced and we get ethene so this is three carbon so the parent carbon atom would be propane so this contains a double bond so en will be replaced by in so we have propene so when it is either ethene or propene we do not bother about numbering because there are only two carbon atoms here you need not number the carbon atom from where the double bond begins or oh, here also you have only three if this double bond was here then again it would be 1 2 3 itself when it is here it is also 1 2 3 so it is invariably one propene okay you need not give the numbers to the carbon atom which contains the double bond let us look at these few examples look at the first one here so we have 1 2 3 4 5 5 carbon atoms so it is a derivative of pentane pentane but it has a double bond therefore you are going to replace pentane by ene it becomes pentene check where the double bond starts when you start numbering it as 1 2 3 4 5 so the carbon carbon double bond is with carbon number 1 hence it becomes 1 pentene okay let us look at this now this is nice a little confusing molecule you have to select the longest carbon chain okay this looks very nice and long but you're not supposed to select this because it does not contain the carbon carbon double bond you have to select the longest chain such that the carbon carbon double bond is also there so look here 1 2 3 4 this is one chain or else you can select this chain 1 2 3 4 5 6 so this is only giving 4 this is giving you 6 so this is the correct choice so this is the parent carbon atom so it is 1 2 3 4 5 6 so it's a hexane derivative so it has a double bond you are going to replace in by in so the parent molecule becomes hexene right so now we shall number it we are numbering it such that the carbon carbon double bond gets the least number so you're going to number it from here 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 so this is 1 2 the second carbon atom contains the substituent 
what is this? This is C2H5. C2H5 is ethyl. Hence the name 2-ethyl 1-hexene. Okay, 2-ethyl 1-hexene. Let us look at this now. See here it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 membered. Okay. So 5 membered you do not have in between. So it is, uh, you know, the double bond is not in between like that. So it is 5 membered. Take it like that. Pentane. But you are going to replace in by in. So it becomes a pentene. Okay. So which place is the in? You are supposed to number it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, or you can number it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You can do that also. Or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So you have, see here, it is going to give you see from here if you number it becomes one two three the in gets third number but from when you do it here it gets the second number so we'll choose this it gets the second number so it is two pentene and in the fourth position you have methyl so the name becomes four methyl two pentene check with this this is one two three four five membered so it is again a pentane but it has a double bond, so it becomes pentene. The double bond begins from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the second carbon atom. Since the double bond begins from the second carbon atom, we are going to give it the number 2, 2 pentene. Okay, look at this now. So it has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is one possibility. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, another possibility or I can take it as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is one possibility or I can take it from here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I cannot take this because this choice will not have the carbon-carbon double bond. So this is ruled out. I have to take this. Okay, I have to take this as a parent carbon atom and I am going to number this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it is 2 hexene. 2 hexene. We have this substituent here in the third position. So it is third position. This is propane. Okay. But it is an isomer. So it is isopropyl. So it is the isopropyl 2 hexene. Look at few more names here when we are going to do it. See here we have old method of giving IUPAC names and there are new methods. Old method is 1-butene. New method is you are going to split this here and you are going to write where the in is. Bute 1-ene. Okay, bute 1-ene. Here this is 1-pentene. It is pent 1 in. This is 2 butene, but 2 in. 2 pentene, pent 2 in. Like that, we have all these other examples. So, if they ask you give IUPAC names for particular alkenes, it is always safe to write old as well as new IUPAC names. Both the names you can write. But they are, if they are specifically asking you, uh, give the name of I give the IUPAC name. It would always be safer for you to write the new IUPAC names. Okay, you should always give new IUPAC names. Okay, moving on to methods of preparation. You have three methods of preparation. The first method is dehydration of alcohols. So when you write it like this, I have written it like this here. So right, this is this means there is a carbon atom here. There is a carbon atom here. When you just write a stick like this, it means this is CH3. CH3. This is also CH3. This is also CH3. And other atoms are specified. This is hydrogen. This is OH. Okay. So, this is called as bond line representation. So, this is CH3. 
This is CH3, this is CH3, this is CH3. This is C, this is C. Okay, so this is an alcohol. Alcohol. In general, when an alcohol is treated with an acid, dehydration occurs, removal of water occurs, and we are going to get an alkene. Okay, check the mechanism here. Water picks up proton from the acid, resulting in OH2 plus. OH2 plus leaves the molecule, creating a carbocation here. Okay, a carbocation is generated. That o OH2 will pick up this proton, gets converted into H3O plus, and this bond shifts in between these two carbon atoms, creating an alkene. You do not have the mechanism yet. It is always nice to learn a reaction with the mechanism so that you will never forget it. Okay. Methods of preparation. The first method is dehydration of alcohols. It's very easy. Just put a little bit of acid to alcohol. You get an alkene. Okay. Yeah. Can you name this now? Can you name this alkene? Select the longest carbon chain. So you are going to select this or you can select this or you can select this. All are going to give you four carbon containing chains. So it is one, two, three. I will select this. One, two, three, four. This is butene. Okay. This is butene. The double bond starts from carbon number two. So it is but2ene. But we have two substituents here. So this is position one. 2, 3, 4. So it is 2, 3, dimethyl, but, 2, in. Okay. So we have started it from an alcohol. So this alcohol is, see here, 2, 3, dimethyl, 1, 2, 3, 4, butanol, butan, 2, all. Okay. 2, 3, dimethyl, butan, buta, 2, all. So, from an alcohol, we are going to end up with alkene. Next method of preparation is dehydrohalogenation of alkyl halides. Dehydrohalogenation, which means you have to remove a hydrogen as well as a halogen. This you can do in presence of See here, it's a solvent and a slight base. You need one base here. When you add a base in presence of a solvent, it is going to remove hydrogen, alpha hydrogen atom. Okay. So this is Br, Br. This is going to leave. So the carbon atom next to the leaving group is called as alpha carbon atom. So this is the alpha carbon atom. This is another alpha carbon atom. This is another alpha carbon atom. All three are CH3. So, all three alpha carbon atoms are similar. So, you can remove one hydrogen from either this or this or this. Any one alpha hydrogen atom should be removed. So, HBr will be eliminated. HBr will be eliminated and an alkene is generated. So, this is called as dehydrohalogenation. You are going to remove hydrogen as well as halogen. And you are going to get an alkyl from an alkyl halide to get an alkene. The last method is partial hydrogenation of alkynes. In this session, the last method which we are discussing is partial hydrogenation. When we know alkynes, they have two double bonds, which means they can accommodate, they can make two more bonds. One carbon atom here can make two bonds. Another carbon atom can make two more bonds and make become saturated. Which means to completely reduce this alkyne, you will require four hydrogen atoms. But if you give only two hydrogen atoms, what happens is alkyne will be converted into alkene. So you do this reduction control in a controlled manner. This is called as partial hydrogenation of alkynes. So, partial hydrogenation of alkynes is also going to give you alkenes. Okay, these are the few references which you can use throughout the organic chemistry. 
which I'm going to teach you for this semester. A quick summary of what we have seen. We have seen nomenclature of alkenes. Nomenclature is similar to that of alkane, but in alkane, we use the suffix as ane. Here you are going to use it as ene. You have to select the carbon chain such that it will have the carbon-carbon double bond in it. Start numbering in a way that carbon-carbon double bond carbon gets the least number. If that double bond is in the center of the molecule, you see that the substituent gets the least number. Okay, all other things are going to remain the same. Uh, we have two methods, common method and IUPAC method. And uh, in IUPAC method, we have new IUPAC method and old IUPAC method. It's always convenient. It's always best for you to remember the new method. And we have seen the methods of preparation. One is dehydrogenation of alcohols, dehydrohalogenation of alkyl halides and partial hydrogenation of alkynes. Thank you.